rise and shout. It is time for What's Trending. Which takes us to what went down at the Marriott Center last night. BYU losing by 15 at home to Utah Valley. The Cougars now 5-5. Five and five. Is this rock bottom? We'll get to that in just a moment. Listen to what Mark Pope had to say following last night's head-scratching double-digit home loss. You know, we got a lot, we got a lot of work to do. Um, we got we to gotta really dig in and get better. It's not going to be an overnight fix. Uh, this team still has the potential to, to grow into a really good team. We just have a lot of work to do right now. And, um, the guys know uh, that right now we're not playing very good basketball, and we just... Um, we got to dig in and and uh, and get better. That's 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 our job. Emotionally, how do you keep this team from going to a dark place where where things can really get dangerous? Well, you you go to a dark spot when you lose. You just do. I mean, that's that's part of sport. Uh, for us, we're you know we're, we're you know we're, we're also not playing well, and so um, that is. You know, uh, with this new group and this really young group, um, we're going to have a little bit more fragility. But the one thing we do is we have unbelievable high character guys and, and they'll you know, we're going to start early in the morning tomorrow. And and, uh, you know, we know that this is a, a long term fix. It's not an overnight fix. And and um, we're committed to, to finding ways to do this better. So we'll keep growing. You appreciate the honesty. Not a quick fix, long-term fix. Understandably, Coach Pope and his team feeling pretty low right now. But how low? Jerem, is this rock bottom right now, having lost to Utah Valley and South Dakota back-to-back -back for BYU basketball? It's pretty bad. I wouldn't call it rock bottom. Uh, BYU has Creighton Saturday. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, toughest game of the season up to this point. And then uh, Utah the next Saturday. Western Oregon on next Thursday, by the way. If you lost to Western Oregon, perhaps it's worse. But honestly... <laughs> It yeah. would be if BYU, <laughs> yeah. BYU is struggling right now and playing some stinky basketball, but that's not going to happen. They're going to beat Western. They're going to beat home, Western Oregon, just like yeah. they beat Westminster yeah. and so on. So it's it's Creighton that's going to be a tough game. Perhaps BYU rise up like it did against San Diego State, but this team's in a different spot than it was at that point. Um, losing convincingly to Utah at home to me would be rock bottom. If you are then you know uh, below 500 Saturday, if you lose to Creighton. You get back to 500 on Thursday, and you go back below 500, lose to Utah. Now, if you beat Utah, who just beat Arizona and Washington State, um, had a good week last week. They're just outside the top 25, top five out or whatever. That, that could sort of uh, bring you back to a place of confidence, uh, which is what we hope happens for BYU. But it's not looking great uh, because BYU – so the answer is no to answer the question. Um, no, not rock bottom. I'll go into some of the issues I, I'm seeing and – and what you're seeing, as we discussed last night on the post game, but it's not rock, rock bottom quite yet. It, it could be, surprisingly, uh, it could be worse. It could than be this. worse, yes. Yeah. I'll say this I hope this is the bottoming out for BYU. Please. That it doesn't get any worse. Please don't get worse than this. So yeah. I hope that, in a weird way, it is rock bottom as it pertains to this season. Yeah, it could be worse, 100%. Just hope that it doesn't get any worse. BYU's not going to beat Creighton, most likely. And they'll get back to six and six. Who knows? Even they'll if they be lose, a dog even against if Utah. They lose home. to Utah. Yeah. What if they can manufacture wins against Lindenwood and Weber State, which all of a sudden feels like a very scary game based on what happened against Utah Valley. Every game is scary when yes. you lose to South Dakota. Lindenwood and is questionable, right? I mean, BYU. Every was, game outside of Western Oregon, Spence. BYU was an eleven and a half point favorite against South Dakota. Lost that game. Nine point favorite against Utah Valley. Lost that game. Vegas doesn't have a good handle on this BYU team. No, no one does. Nobody right does. Now. Yeah, and it's fair. So even if BYU does lose, as they're going to be projected to be, to Utah and Creighton, no. Like, it's, it's as expected. Now, if they lose to Lindenwood and Weber State, then this sinks even further down uh, whatever pit you want to call this thing. But The it, net rankings and yeah, the Ken Palm I, just... I, 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 I. I said last night, I was trying to think of the last time that BYU was in this precarious of a position as a team. You probably have to go back to 2004, 2005, which was Steve Cleveland's last year. That team went 9-21. and 21. They didn't have an identity, really struggled on offense, didn't have an alpha. This team is not that team. And, and I heard comparisons. This might as well be 1996-97 with Tony. Ing no, that was 1-20. They've already won four more games. Okay. This team is going to win a handful of more games. They might be 500 when all is said and done. They're not going to be. I don't think they're not going to have a losing record. No, I do not no. think this team will end with a losing record. No, I don't either. Yeah. 
So this is it's bad. It's not that bad. This is not. One in twenty-five. It's not nine in twenty-one, but it is. It is a tough position, and the toughest position yeah. BYU has been in in the last eighteen years. BYU desperately needs some leadership. They miss Spencer Johnson in a lot of ways: in perimeter defense, sure. in his ability and to, Nell. to get a bucket, and Trevin Nell. Like those are your experienced veteran players, and both are out with injuries. That is factoring into this. That's factoring into the 11 for 59 from the three-point line in the last two games. Some of that. Because Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson are two of the best three-point shooters and experienced three-point shooters on this team. Yep. No alpha. We've discussed it. Typically, to be great, like a great college basketball team, you need two guys, at least two guys, that when you need a bucket in the clutch, you can be like, okay, he's going to get it for me. You have to have at least one to be okay. That was Alex Barcelo last year. BYU doesn't have that guy on the floor right now. Last night, it was painfully obvious that they didn't know where to go when they needed a bucket in the worst way. Fusini Traore did what he could do, but he's not in a position where he can go get quick buckets. Like he's an 18, a setup. 18 and 10. What more do you want him to do last night? It, yeah, 30 and 20? It's uh, a slow setup to get him the ball. Like It just doesn't work. He's a post player. You need a guard yeah. that's going to be a bucket getter, and BYU doesn't have that right now. No alpha guard to go get a bucket. Really tough. And then it just kind of starts to look like what the media often calls hero ball. You know, just a lot of one-on-one Well, hero ball is great if you have a hero. There's no like, alpha. Like the NBA is hero ball because those guys are extremely skilled one on one. There's no alpha yeah. on the guard line, and that is very different than what BYU has had on the floor in the recent past. BYU yeah. has had a wealth of heroes on the guard line in the first three plus seasons for Mark Pope. Well, you know, it's they, been rows on. Yeah. You've always yeah. had two guards that you could trust. Not the case right now. It's tough right now. Yeah. I, so, I mean, <laughs> the question is where do you go from here? It's a, and, it, and Mark Pope, I don't think he knows. No. He, he said, this is not a short fix. You, this is a long fix. You have the guys you have. Um, so you I Spencer have, Johnson healthy? I see four issues. Well, it's going to be weeks, it sounds like. Okay, I see four issues. If you're not skilled enough, just clearly, uh, to your point, they're not skilled enough. I don't think there's a guard right now on the roster that is as skilled as Alex Barcelo, TJ Haas, Jake Tulson, Brandon Averett types. Those are great players. And listen. Rudy Williams and Jackson Robinson, no Waterman, has shown us some real flashes of brilliance. The consistency is not there. Unfortunately, those three haven't been as good individually and collectively as we were hoping to this point. It's not all on those three, but certainly they were brought in to make an impact in the rotation in kind of the top six or seven there, and they've started multiple games. How, how desperate is BYU right now? They started two freshmen last night. They just Let's mix it up. Down hall, what can you do for us? Um, you know, Dallas struggled from the field, two for 12. Richie Saunders didn't score in the game. That was tough. That was a tough showing. Certainly the first start of perhaps many in their BYU career. We'll see. Um, T. John Lucas, Rudy Williams, Jackson Robinson, quality players. They need to, they need to elevate their game, right? T. John was good. I think we're hoping he was very good uh, last year. Injuries certainly have played. Uh, that's number two into this. Uh, Spencer Johnson, Trevor Nell, as we mentioned. New scheme, by the way. This takes time to implement and be effective at. Still figuring it out offensively, defensively. Well, and when you're doing that with a roster that's turned over year after year with the transfer portal, Every it gets year, even more difficult. Uh, and, and to any incoming person, it's their first year in that scheme, even if you kept the scheme the same. It's just, it's just hard. And then leadership, yeah, who's in charge of the group? Who's the alpha? Remember, this is the first season in set of games without Alex Barcella for Mark Pope. Alex has always been a good leader. He's kind of that number four three years ago. He was the number one. The alpha, clearly as a leader and the most skilled player on the team in the last two years. Now that he's not there, Rudy Williams was expected to fill that void. It has not been what he or the team or the fans were hoping up to this point. We're only about a third of the way through the regular season, but feels like BYU has told us who they are, yes. like we've talked about in we, football. We know who they are. And they've played close games against uh, – Idaho State and Missouri State, and we uh, refused to believe that that team was close to those teams in margin. Uh, those were anomalies. No, now they're not, right? Um, you lose to South Dakota and Utah Valley. This is tough. This is tough to watch because there's a high standard here. BYU is expected to be uh, competitive in the WCC, at least sniff the tourney a little bit. If you don't make it, like last year, you at least make a little run in the NIT. That's sort of the program standard. Every now and then, you have a season like this. And honestly, that's okay because you can't every year be in the tourney as a program like BYU, and you can't every year be yeah. good to very good to great. There are, there are 2017s in football, but it got you Zach Wilson. 
Like, it was worth it because he had 20 and 21. 22, you take a step back. It wasn't a losing record, no bowl game. You have a shot at eight. You know, you at least got seven. You have to, you go through these spells. You don't want it. You want to reload and recruit and da da da. And you're always good. Everybody has a setback. Sure. Even Alabama, who only lost two games, didn't make the playoff. This year's like a disappointment for them. Like that's a whole nother level. It happens. It stinks. I hope BYU figures some things out. No, this is not rock bottom. BYU's got two of the next three D1 games are really tough for the Cougars. They and and it's a at this point. And I always talk about this. I want the present to, everyone always pushes forward. I go to church, sometimes it pushes forward. I'm like, what about right now? What about right now? Um, and in sports, you want to win right now. If you're just going into the Big 12, that's this why now it's, becomes. That's why it's more panic for most fans. Because it's like, oh, if we can't do this My now, gosh. what does the Big 12 BYU's look like? bad right now. What's going to happen next year yes. when every game is hard? Sure. I want to I want to emphasize the point that Robbie McCombs put out online, which I think is important in the big picture conversation. And when you lose... A bunch, you start to pick at things. Getting the best talent who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I think needs to be emphasized more. Robbie was making this point last night. I agree. For foundational pieces, the transfer portal is a huge part of what college athletics is, especially in football and men's basketball. At BYU in soccer and volleyball, it's not as big a deal, and they win a lot. It depends on the sport. But in this sport, I think BYU needs more of those pieces. Obviously, football you got to win the state. And you know who's going to help BYU win the state? Jay Hill. Because that guy is invested in Utah football. I'm excited about that part. In basketball, while the Lone Peak 3 didn't turn out like we thought, you still need to get the Lone Peak 3. Hey, TJ and, Haas could have been part of an all-time team had they gone to the tournament. Yes, and Eric Mika was amazing. And obviously, um, Nick was really good when he played here and it didn't work out. There were all kinds of things there, but... I think big picture, that is one piece that needs to be emphasized, maybe a little more than it has been the last year or two. DEFCON 2 is kind of how I was feeling last night, which is, yeah. it's, it's, metaphorically yeah. speaking, one step away from nuclear warfare. <laughs> but I stepped back and thought, okay, why, why do I feel this way? And it's because of what looms ahead. Not just in the Big well, 12. Well, and it's UVU. We, we have a certain pride here of not losing wanting to lose to, to Utah UVU. Valley. A yeah. losing streak to Utah sure. Valley. Sure, yeah. The Big 12 looms. The West Coast Conference is good, Jerem, this year. Yeah. Like BYU. Santa Clara's good again. If we're being real, BYU could play on Thursday at the West Coast Conference tournament if they finish in seventh place. And they're. Well, in fifth place. Portland's good. Santa Clara's good. St. Mary's is good. San Francisco's good. Gonzaga's really good. BYU struggled at Pacific yeah. in San Diego last year. I don't believe BYU will finish in seventh place. I think fifth, I don't, fifth place is kind of what you're. Middle of the pack. Figuring Middle right of now. the pack. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is this is a hard reality check for BYU basketball. Let's hear